Decentralized Autonomous Organization. Quite a mouthful, which is why most people say DAO. As in DAO. Really enjoy the diphthong. DAO. But what are they? What do they do? And why should you care? Very, very good questions. In a nutshell, DAOs provide the framework for open decentralized collaboration, which it turns out can be incredibly productive. Not only that, they turn the traditional vertical decision tree for corporations, societies, and even countries completely on its head. Well, actually technically on its side, because that decision tree becomes entirely horizontal, like me. And what does that mean? That you, fine sir or madam, can get a whole lot more power than you ever could before to have a role in the way all of our futures pan out. Sound good? Then stick around, because this is School of Block! You get me, fam? Hey you, do you like freedom? I like freedom, we all like freedom. This is School of Block where we talk about your financial freedom and if you wanna get more financial freedom, there are a couple of buttons down there you could press. There's a bell, ooh, that's nice. There's a subscribe button, you wanna be pushing that because every time we drop a video, you'll get notified. I'll see ya. We don't have to go back too far into history. That's time. That's not history. Come on, guys. To find the birth of the decentralized autonomous organization. Although confusingly, if you say the DAO, that tends to refer to one particular insane DAO event that was created to help investors gain exposure to Ethereum. It was launched in April 2016 with the meritocratic goal of eliminating human error and manipulation of investor funds, which is ironic because this very first DAO itself got hacked two months later, leading to the theft of 3.6 million ETH, worth about $50 million at the time. It's worth a great deal more now. And what happened next is part of crypto law, and not the subject of this film. And if you'd like to know more, simply Google Ethereum Fork DAO, and you will disappear down a rabbit hole quicker than Alice on roller skates, rolling back networks, Ethereum Classic, all of that stuff. Don't go there, maybe go there. But let's continue by going vertical and horizontal. So instead, let's start this journey by going back into the dawn of human civilization. It's a jungle out there. Since then, our tribal nature and some degree of technological practicality has led to what we call vertical organizational structure. What does this involve? Fundamentally, hierarchy. The bot at the top usually gets to demand changes, although voting it, yeah, it is possible. Any voting must be handled manually and is prone to manipulation. Thank you, Donald. Activity is typically private to the group or organization involved, and the chain of decision-making is often filtered down vertically, leading to inefficiencies and strategic drift. This is the way things have always been, plus or minus. We've gotten used to it, but what if there was another way where the structure was flat and fully democratized. All members, hello you, are consulted on any change with voting required. Voting, imagine that. Voting is tallied and outcomes implemented automatically without any possible manipulation or argy-bargy. Any services offered like distribution of funds. Hello, if this were real money, I'd be rich right now. And these are all handled also automatically without interference. And all activity from all of this is transparent and fully public. You know that feeling when you contribute to a charity and you're not entirely sure where it goes. All of that goes away. Now, I don't know about you, but I know which of these sounds better to me. And guess which one is enabled by a DAO. So let's take a look at some examples. Here's one you weren't expecting. Bitcoin. Now, it might be a very primitive example, but the BTT network can be considered the first working DAO. It operates in a decentralized fashion and is coordinated by a consensus protocol with no hierarchy between participants. Now, the common goal for Bitcoin is storing and transferring value without a central entity coordinating the system. But that's just one possible use case. How about token governance, for example? Make a DAO where the MKR token is widely available on decentralized exchanges, enabling anyone who owns it to have a voting power on the maker protocol's future. Of course, 
Social media platforms are ripe for a good dowing too. Imagine a platform where you have ownership of your identity, data, and digital assets. In stark contrast to the centralized megaliths that dominate the social media space at the moment. Social.network is the first of these to launch, using the Polkadot blockchain to enable all content to be created as NFTs. But there will, of course, be more. And if you remember episode 21, where we dived into crypto avatars, you'll remember this lovely chap from the Bored Ape Yacht Club and how it's shaken up the NFT space. Got an ape? Well, you're pretty much part of a DAO now due to the horizontal structure of that club. And in episode 22, we introduced the concept of social tokens. The exclusive FWB club recently moved to a DAO model of governance. And of course, the NFT exposure vehicle, Whale, probably won't be far behind either. Given the breadth of possibilities for this type of organization, DAOs may point the way to the future of work itself, where individuals group themselves into working teams. Now, these teams may be based on their career experience and interests and work together to run organizations better collectively. So it could be sayonara or arrivederci or dui to your boss and welcome to the new creator economy. I am out of here. Fine, didn't like you anyway. Take it and don't come back. Think about it. Look at the entertainment industry and in fact any creative industry these days. Countless mergers and acquisitions have turned dozens of smaller entities into gigantic shareholder-owned corporations with giant pencils. And which projects get funded and made? The ones with the highest chance of return on investment and lowest risk? This is why IP is king and that's all we see at the cinema now. Prequels, sequels, reboots and remakes recycling the same IP over and over and over again. Take a good look at this book. This is Save the Cat by Blake Snyder. And this book is almost single-handedly responsible for the shape and the scope of every movie that you see because this is the template for great scripts. The thing is, there are literally thousands of brilliant, original, fresh scripts sitting on shelves, come on, on shelves, or more accurately, in inboxes that will never get made. And that is just the movie business. He stroked her hair and made her feel like DAOs have the potential to shake all of this up and become a stepping stone for new creative ideas. For example, look at Mirror.xyz. It's a publishing platform where everyone who contributes their writing becomes a part owner of the business. And importantly, quality of content is incentivized with the audience voting, come back here please, for the weekly article pitch and writer. Platforms like this have the potential to revolutionize the way we express, share, and monetize our thoughts. I wonder what it would be like if I stroked her hair. But there's no reason why DAO-based media platforms couldn't also apply to visual arts, video content like this, and any other creative industry you can think of. So let me jump into one, and I'll show you exactly how they work. So I'm a member of a few different DAOs. I'm in art DAOs, I'm in tech DAOs, but I'm also in a very interesting DAO called the MeBits DAO. And MeBits are the project that Lava Labs launched after Autoglyphs and of course after CryptoPunks. CryptoPunks are hot news right now. Autoglyphs are kind of a niche thing, very interesting generative art project. But MeBits, 20,000 individual voxel characters that people went crazy for and probably overpaid for, but then suddenly didn't know what to do with. There was a huge amount of work to be done to understand how on earth we would create value around MeBits. Lava Labs sold these, but now they're in the hands of people and there's really no roadmap for what we do with them. So the DAO has been created by Kai Ghani, who is a generative artist himself. They introduced it back in May and it has quickly become one of the best organized, best run DAOs I've ever been a part of because they just very clearly articulate what they're gonna do. They very, very, very carefully make that roadmap happen. So for instance, we have things like the red ticket giveaway. So if you're part of the MeBits DAO, you get a red ticket, and this will give you the opportunity to win a piece of one of the very, very rarest MeBits of all called a dissected. Now, if you think that the number one ranked MeBit right now, which is a double pig, was sold for a thousand ETH, a thousand ETH to, a, to another DAO, to a collector DAO that believed that this was a good investment, then you can start to understand how valuable people think these MeBits are going to be. And the Dissected are the most rare ones of all. They're like the aliens in CryptoPunks. So the MeBits DAO, I am a founder member of, and as a founder member, I get a, a beautiful 
NFT. That represents me as a founding member. And I get to decide, you know, how we're going to onboard new founders, get to connect with some extremely high powered people who are building all sorts of different things from all around the space. We have artists in there, we have coders, we have developers, we have 3D animators. It was generally a very, very, very high quality DAO. That's it. Maybe it's DAO. One of the best DAOs you will come across, for sure. No new technology or process is immune from teething trouble, and it's fair to say DAOs have not had an easy ride to date. The legal and regulatory environment is currently uncertain. Now, how do different jurisdictions create a regulatory framework around a borderless and global organization. DAOs have also previously been the target of coordinated attacks and their desirable properties of decentralization, immutability and trustlessness do inherently carry significant performance and security drawbacks. And full decentralization may not always be desirable in every case. Not every participant may want or be informed enough to vote effectively and centralized organizations can operate more efficiently in some circumstances. I'm, fucking... I'm not going out on too much of a limb when I say traditional organizations have their limitations. And a perfectly structured DAO goes a long way to eliminating many of them. Every investor can have the opportunity to shape the organization. Innovative ideas can be put forward by anyone and everyone and considered by the entire group. A set of pre-written rules that everyone is aware of before joining, as well as the voting system, leaves no room for argy bargy amongst the group. And of course, Along with the rules, every financial transaction is available on the blockchain and completely transparent. But for me, the most exciting part of the DAO is the power to the people aspect of it. It's the opportunity to change the nature of the way we work and who we work for. You always wanted to give it to the man, but this is the way we do it. You've been watching School of Block presented by Ledger and the Defiant. Demystifying decentralization one block at a time. Don't forget to subscribe, drop us a like if that's what you're into, and as always, here's to your financial freedom! Here's to your financial freedom! Here's to your financial freedom! Oh, I'm over this shit.